Drive left center field. He might have had it. There it goes. It's there. Welcome back to the sports page. It is now time for our draft round table. And so we are joined by UT Chargers beat writer Michael Gelkin. And even better, by former Chargers defensive end Jacques Césaire. Uh, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, Travis. You better. can't. I mean, he's distinguished. This is, <laughs> right. It's know, not Nick Cannon. I'm not Jacques. Right no, it's yeah. good. That's bad. <laughs> we see Gelkin every day. Yeah. All right. Chargers have a lot of needs. Offensive tackle, offensive guard, inside linebacker, outside linebacker. What else? Where else do their needs rank in this draft? Nose tackle. You only have one right now in Cam Thomas. you got to get deeper there. I mean, veteran is always possible after the draft. But, yeah, you have to, can't, Cam Thomas can't do it all. You know how important it is a rotation on defensive line. Yeah, I definitely think it's important for them to get some kind of depth in the defensive what line. What happened to the depth on the D-line, Jacques? I, I have I know. no idea. The veteran presence. Well, you know, Jacques is there. It's still available <laughs> out there. <laughs> after but, the draft, you yes. Know, but, uh, uh, you know, to be serious, though, I think also cornerback. Is a, is a position that they need yeah. to kind of look at right now. I mean, well, Case on the Jammer gone. Yeah, they, yep. you have Case on the Jammer gone, but you also have to think about that. Derek Cox is obviously their long term on, on one side. Mm -hmm. Right now, you have Sharish Wright and Marcus, Gil, uh, Marcus Gilchrist. They're, they're fighting for a starting spot right there. So, one of those guys are either going to be the long term you know, project or you're going to have to draft somebody. Okay. What is the effect, Jacques, you lose two veterans like that? Yeah. You know, it, Case on and Jammer. Yeah, I mean, Even if these other guys are ready. It's 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 a huge effect because I mean obviously those younger guys have been looking up to those to to Kason and Jammer for all these years and trying to figure out what to do next and and now th those guys aren't going to be here they have to you know kind of step up the, to the plate so you guys like guys like Cherise have to take it upon themselves to be that new leader in that room mm -hmm. of course we, Eric we Weddle the only r the, surviving guy yeah <laughs> uh, we can't say <laughs> enough good things yeah. about you know Corey Legion and Kendall Reyes and even Cam Thomas when he's done but. There's a big hole missing with the, the absence of the veteran guys that have brought these guys up through the ranks. Well, you know what? I, I remember a, a, a way, way back in the day when I was a youngster and uh, AJ, he completely wiped the whole offensive line out and brought all new guys in. And it worked out. He brought some veterans in and Roman Oban and Mike Goff. And then he brought in a couple of young guys and Nick Hardwick. And that nucleus worked out. Back when he could draft. <laughs> right. Well, <laughs> now's a pretty good time for uh, exactly. that one right, right. there. All right. All right. If all three tackles are gone, which it seems like they could be by the time they pick at number 11, what are the pro pros and cons of going one direction or another? Yeah, Lane Johnson probably won't be available. I mean, if Lane Johnson's available, I'll pick 11. I think the Chargers are jumping mm -hmm. up and down screaming like, Reese Witherspoon out of DUI They checkpoint. just call New York and go, <laughs> <laughs> duh. Nice one. Yeah. If, if, if right. There's a score for them, Right, for sure. but um, yeah. I mean, you have to address the offensive line somehow. I mean, we we're, we were talking off, uh, off camera about Brandon Albert is a guy, the Chiefs are floating around. He's someone maybe a second or possibly a third round draft pick. You have to sign a guy like that, obviously. But, I mean, if, if it depends what the Chargers draft board looks like. If it's, you know, you have Eric Fisher, you have Luke Jokel, you have Lane Johnson, and the Chargers look at the rest of the, the, the prospects at left tackle, I'm like, you know, we don't, we're not comfortable with any of these guys. They might have to find that long-term solution. If it's not one of those guys, well, you maybe you have to do something we, creative. We've, we've talked in this, or this uh, show about uh, there not being that go-to guy in the top mm -hmm. ten where people are going to be leapfrogging and mm -hmm. stuff. But if something crazy happens and one of those guys is there, uh, you just you just don't know. Right. You just don't know. You definitely don't know. But I also think that you know the draft is just so unpredictable and, and yes. anything can happen. So you, you have to kind of look at it as if if there's an opportunity for them to trade up and get okay. Elaine Johnson, I think they should definitely do that. If not, trade down. There's Jonathan Cooper's out there. Yeah. Chance Warmack is out there. You know, get some kind of offensive lineman that comes in there that is going to be your next 10-year guy. You know, people are just assuming Cooper and uh, and uh, Warmack are going to be there, but they might not. I mean, everyone needs right. offensive linemen. I was uh, involved in a mock draft of, uh, you know, supposed experts uh, <laughs> the other day. I took Fluker. I took DJ Fluker because every other offensive yeah. lineman was gone by 11. Yeah. Right. You know, I think <laughs> I think you don't need to be desperate like that. Not saying that D DJ Fluker is a bad player or anything like Good that. Point. I'm <laughs> just saying that it, you know, if 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 it's tackle they want or guard they want, you can still find some some good quality guys in the right. second and third round. If if you can't find that tackle or guard that you really want, then go after maybe a D Milner or something like that at cornerback. Oh, corner. You know, or right. maybe uh, or Elam at, at, at strong safety because they need someone next to Weddle anyways. 
even though they're going to give Stucky the opportunity to, to show and what he can do Taylor, at, Brandon at, Taylor. at strong safety. Yeah. But I think that maybe if you can't address the offensive line, we'll address the secondary. And, Michael, you can speak to this, but if they trade up, it just seems like they have so many other roster needs mm. that it would yeah. really hurt them. Yeah, if they trade up, it says as much what they think about Lane Johnson as it does about the other guys in the, on, at, at left tackle because it makes all the sense in the world just to stay, stand pat at 11, let the guy come to you or trade down right. and get a player uh, who will help you and get those and dress needs with those more additional picks but uh, yeah to trade up and that would come at a price I think the Chargers are they have to think pretty hard about what that sets them up for later down the road. So besides the fans maybe riding in the streets and maybe Philip having a, a moment with his <laughs> wife if, what, yeah. what happens if they come out of this without a left tackle if they come out of this draft do you think that they well, after Tom Telesco calls Philip to apologize <laughs> <laughs> um, you have to get look obviously that leaves a veteran route and so mm -hmm. I, I think a player like uh, Max Starks uh, former Remember Steelers left tackle, uh, Bryant McKinney. I mean, he's a veteran, believe me. I mean, he didn't start at all in the regular season for the Rams last year, but he's a guy, you know, who started throughout the playoffs, those four games, he was solid. I mean, you really would rather not go that stopgap option. Obviously, you want to find yeah. the long term. Again, I mean, gap. if the Chargers wanted Starks, if they wanted McKinney, they'd be here by now. They wanted to find someone in the draft or, or a veteran who can really bring it, like maybe an Albert, but. Pay a third veteran in, uh, in three years or four years yeah. Uh, yeah. at that position. <laughs> <laughs> and Jacques, we're talking a lot about the draft, but what about the beauty of being undrafted? And you can speak to this. The Chargers have had, mm. this will be, if they saw, if they take a, um, an undrafted free agent right on their roster after training camp, this will be their 17th season doing that. Well, you know, you I, I don't think it's, uh, you know, beautiful or anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's a long road travel to be an undrafted free agent to come into the NFL and, you know, not be a draft pick. Because if, you, if a draft pick is someone they want. Yeah, that they've done their homework on and they want. When they bring in an undrafted free agent, it's like, we kind of want him, but we're going to see how he I'll works out. I'll say this, out. though, Jacques. You and your agent, like a lot of agents do with undrafted guys, did a good job picking a team that needed defensive linemen. Yeah. You're a seventh-round pick and you get $50,000. There's The team could care less. Sometimes yeah. they just throw a, some, a dart at the board and say, yeah. oh, we'll take this guy in the seventh round. You know, the beauty about dra getting an undrafted free agent, though, is that you know that that guy has a huge chip on his shoulder. Yeah. And that, that guy wants He's to make play. the team and do whatever he wants. Hopefully yeah. you'll play. be back next week and you can talk about the guys they uh, got as undrafted free agents oh, by yeah, next week. Yes. You can handicap we'll them for us. We'll have both of you back next week. Michael, you're invited <laughs> as well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, thanks, thanks. For, uh, thanks for joining us for our pre-draft show. We'll see if any of us knew what we were talking about come right. Thursday, Friday, and Saturday.